Hey, what's up guys? Mitch here, and welcome back to another video. Also, happy 2018. There's going to be some awesome stuff happening this year. Now, today I'm going to be talking about Home Assistants, more specifically the Google Home Mini. Home Assistants were a huge part of 2017, with Apple showing off their entry to the market in the HomePod. We didn't see it come to market this year, with the release date being pushed back into early 2018, which could mean all the way back to April. The first Home Assistant we saw was the Amazon Echo, quickly joined by the Google Home, and hopefully soon, the HomePod. Google, though, has really been pushing forward in this area, with the release of their Google Home Max and Mini to join the original Google Home. During the holiday season, though, they also dropped the price of the Google Home Mini to 29 bucks and started giving it away with the purchase of many different smart home products like Nest thermostats. I picked one up and absolutely love it. Just having a decent quality speaker for my desk is great, but the ease of using voice control really makes it awesome. Both of my parents have already become used to saying, hey Google, play some music, which is what they get used for the most. Privacy is somewhat of a concern, with the microphones always being active, but I don't think it's that much of an issue. The only real issue that I had with the Mini was the fact that it needed to be plugged into a wall full time for it to work. With the size of the Mini, it really seemed like the perfect portable speaker that integrated the Google Assistant. I wanted to build a wireless version of the Google Home Mini as a Christmas gift, but I wanted to make sure it was possible. Quick tangent on why I went with something like this over a normal Bluetooth speaker. So I was building this for my sister, and having given her many Bluetooth speakers that never get used, I figured she wanted something different. So I figured the Google Assistant would be fantastic for her, so she can control her music while she's not able to use her hands. And that's something that's important to her. Looking at the specs for the Google Home Mini, we can see that it draws 1.7 amps at 5 volts. So any battery bank that covers that would work for this project. I chose to go with the Anker PowerCore 10,000, both for the large capacity for the size, as well as the reliability I know Anker batteries have. Attaching the Mini right to the battery would have worked out fine, but I wanted something that at least seemed a little more put together. I designed a circular part that held the Google Home at the top and also had a slot for the Anchor battery. Then I set up a 3D print file for the MakerBot printer that I had access to, needing support material for the battery opening, but past that, this was a pretty simple print. I printed in black, which I think goes best with the black Mini and will show the least amount of wear and tear. I also picked up a 4 inch right angle micro USB cable to power the Mini with the battery. Securing everything to the base I printed was super easy. I designed the battery slot to be tight enough to hold onto the battery without any adhesive, which allows for the battery to be removed and used for charging other devices if you need it. For the Mini at the top, I used Bluetech, which is actually designed to hold posters and things to the wall, but using enough of it seems to hold the Mini to the base really well. I didn't want anything to be difficult to remove, and since I designed the part for the Mini to sit above the base, the Bluetech can sit around the edge of it, making it easy to remove if you wanted to. As a whole, I think this project went really well and my sister loves it. There are some things that are different than just using a Google Home plugged into the wall though. First off, being that you now have to charge the battery that's powering the Mini. My sister has been using it for a few weeks now and said the battery lasts for about a day of use leaving the cable plugged in full time, but it could definitely last much longer if you let the battery shut down while not using it. Since anchor batteries provide power right when power is being drawn and can't be turned off, the battery is always being drained, even when not using it. To get around this, simply unplugging the cord from the battery would let the battery last for much longer. It really isn't that big of an issue, especially if you're just charging it at night, but if you want the battery to last longer, unplugging will do that for you. Another thing is how the Google Home handles music playback, especially with Spotify. The Google Home is actually its own music streaming device. It's not a Bluetooth speaker in the traditional sense, where the music is always being streamed from your phone. Since the Mini is playing through the Mini itself, it needs to be connected to the internet to work with Google Assistant. But if you're away from the internet and still want to use the Mini as a Bluetooth speaker, that's actually possible. First, open up the Google Home app. Then choose the device you want to connect to, and then from there choose Pair Bluetooth Devices and Settings, and click Enable Pairing Mode. After you enable it, you will see your Google Home show up in your Bluetooth Devices in Settings. And when connected, you can use it as a basic speaker to play your music wirelessly from your phone. Besides the slight battery and internet annoyances, the DIY wireless Google Home Mini has been rock solid. My sister absolutely loves using it around the home, from listening to music while getting ready, to have a speaker to use while playing basketball. Yes, a normal Bluetooth speaker would have covered some of these things, but having the Google Assistant built in is fantastic for controlling your music. I'll have another video of the Google Assistant and the Google Home Mini coming soon, so subscribe if you want to see that. If I was going to do this project again though, there are a few things that I would change. As you can see, the outer rim of the base is larger than the Mini, something I wanted to be the same size, but I think the battery not sticking out very far is more important. A smaller battery would fix this issue though, and let the Mini sit flush with the rest of the base. Another thing I would try to change is the exposed cable. The small cable I went with is very durable but it's still at risk of getting unplugged or damaging the port if the speaker is dropped, and having it inside the base would also make the design a lot cleaner. 
I am very happy with how this turned out though. And if you want to make one of your own, I'll leave everything that I use down in the description below. So check there if you're looking for it. And if you do end up building one of your own, let me know over on Twitter. I'm MRM Tech there. That's all for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you want to see more videos and leave a like if you enjoyed. I will catch you in the next video.